All right, good morning. Um, you should have just watched a video about Johnny Appleseed. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna read a biography on the person who inspired the legend of Johnny Appleseed. We're gonna read a biography on this guy named John Chapman. And so this is the graphic organizer that you guys will do um, as we're reading this. Please try to put two facts about his childhood, two facts about his family, education, early life, obstacles. Obstacles are what difficulties did he face? What are some things that he had to overcome? And his major contributions, that's what did he really do for society? What did he do that was important and has us remembering who John Chapman is? And then at the end, you just write, in a sentence or two, the most important thing that you learned. All right. So you can also access this book on Epic, but this is um, the story of Johnny Appleseed or John Chapman. Chapter one, a pioneer planter. About 200 years ago, near the year 1800, John Chapman set out for the American West. He worked alone along the Ohio River, clearing land for planting. Johnny Day dreamed about how this land would look in a few short years after the settlers came. He pictured orchards of apple trees and smiled. His work was important. It would provide the settlers with much needed food and goods to trade. Once the land was cleared and the soil was ready, Johnny dropped apple seeds into small holes he had dug in straight, neat rows. When the planting was done, he built a fence around the apple nursery. The fence would protect the seedlings from hungry animals. Then Johnny moved on to another site and started all over. Johnny was a pioneer planter. In the early 1800s, the United States looked very different than it does today. Most of the country was a wilderness of grassy plains and forest. Some colonies or towns had formed up and down the eastern part of the United States. A few cities were thriving as far west as Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There were, there were few settlers living west of the mountains near Pittsburgh. In time, the Northwest Territory became open for settlement. For a small price, pioneers could travel to this area and stake out land that would be theirs to own. The land was between the Ohio and the Mississippi rivers. It was rich and good for farming. So we can look here in the old Northwest Territory and the Ohio River runs right along here and the Mississippi River is here. So this was the area that was up for um, getting land and new settlement. Actually, I'm from Indiana, so this is, yeah, kind of cool. Slowly, pioneers arrived. Their trips through the wilderness were long and hard. They rode in covered wagons, bringing their families and all their belongings with them. Instead of roads, the pioneers traveled on Indian trails, which had not been made for wagons. Every evening, they stopped and set up camp. Most of the pioneers slept on the ground. Sleeping outdoors with the wild animals was dangerous. John Chapman was one step ahead of these pioneers. He was one of the first to explore this new territory. He was there because he had a dream. He was going to plant apple seeds across the new frontier. Stories spread of John Chapman and people started calling him Johnny Appleseed. As he quickly became a folk hero across the western frontier, stories of his adventures grew and grew. Some of the stories are true. Others are tall tales or legends. Chapter 2. John Chapman. So, this is where you'll start to fill in your graphic organizer. I would say this is the most important parts of his life here, the biography. September 26, 1774 was a beautiful autumn day in Lee, Lee Munster, Massachusetts. Juicy apples were ripe on the trees and ready for picking. 
Leaves were beginning to turn bright red, orange, and yellow. On this day, John Chapman was born. John's parents were Nathaniel and Elizabeth Chapman. John's mother took care of him and his little sister Elizabeth, while his father worked as both a farmer and a carpenter. His father tended crops and repaired farm equipment. John's first years of life were very sad. The Revolutionary War had begun, and in 1776, John's father was fighting against the British. By John's second birthday, his mother had died. So that could be an obstacle he had to overcome. In 1780, John's father returned from the war and married again. The family moved to Longmeadow, Massachusetts. Over the next few years, their family grew and grew. John was the oldest of 12 children. Yeah, if you think your brother or sister is annoying now, imagine having 11 brothers and sisters. Near John's home in Longmeadow, there was an apple orchard. In the fall, the family would pick apples. They kept them in their cool cellar so that they would have food for the winter. They made sauce, cider, vinegar, and butter from the apples. John's favorite dish was apple pie. John enjoyed watching the apples grow. He spent much time outside close to nature. He found it peaceful in the woods with all the plants and animals. John took long walks along the Connecticut River and studied the flowers and the birds. His first paying job was working in his neighbor's apple orchard. He learned to chop wood and tend to the apple trees. John also had a special way with animals. As a young boy, he helped heal animals that were sick or hurt. As John grew, so did his dreams to travel west and plant apple trees there. At the age of 23, he decided it was time to go. When he left home, he took with him just those things he knew he would need to live in the wilderness. He brought a hatchet for cutting wood and flint for making fire. He took a stew pot for cooking and collecting water, a bag of cornmeal for eating, and a sack of apple seeds for planting hung from his hip. Finally, he tucked a Bible into his coat. John was on his way. Chapter 3. John's Adventures Out West Not long after John set out on his adventure, he got very sick. It was lucky for him that an Indian mother found him and cared for him. There are no records that say who she was or who her people were. For about a year, John lived with the Indians as he got well. They taught him even more about the outdoors. He learned which plants could cure which illnesses. The Indians helped prepare him to continue his outdoor adventure. John traveled through western New York and down into Pennsylvania. He planted apple seeds along the way. When he reached the western part of Pennsylvania, near French Creek, he started his first apple nursery. As the trees grew, he cared for them. Some sources say John did all this work by himself. Others say his half-brother, Nathaniel, was with him for at least part of the journey. John Chapman continued to travel the wilderness, searching for good places to plant. He lived a very simple life, sleeping and cooking outdoors. John met settlers along the way. He would sell them apple seeds or seedlings. If the settlers had little money, he would trade the seeds for old clothes or shoes. Sometimes Johnny just gave them away. He taught the settlers how to plant and care for their apple trees. By 1805, Johnny's father moved west of Pennsylvania with his large family. Johnny's sister, Elizabeth, who was married, did not come along. Nathaniel, John's half-brother, stayed with their father in the Northwestern, Northwest Territory. Historians agree from that point, if not before, John Chapman traveled alone. John was friendly with the people he met. They would invite him to stay with them. At night, after supper, they would listen to him as he told stories about his travels. Sometimes John read from the Bible. He followed the Christian teaching, teachings of a scientist named Emanuel Swedenborg. One part was about the golden rule, which says you should treat people the way you want to be treated. Chapman loved children and would bring them small gifts 
bring small gifts for them. The children started calling him Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed was an odd sight for these new settlers. Most often, he walked barefoot. Some say that his feet became as hard and tough as an animal's paw. If Johnny needed a shirt, he would make one out of a sack. He would cut a hole in it for his head and two holes for his arms. Others say that he wore his cooking pot right on his head. It would have been easier than carrying it, but still, it would have been heavy. John often met up with Indians. Many Indians were not happy that so many settlers were coming to their land, but they liked Johnny. They called him Medicine Man because he taught them how to use plants as medicine. He helped make his new friends well again. Animals became Johnny's friends too. He was kind to all creatures and the animals seemed to sense this. He never traveled with a gun. He did not believe that it was right to kill any animal. Instead of eating meat, Johnny cooked cornmeal. He also gathered berries, nuts, leaves, fruit, and vegetables. Johnny's kindness to animals was one source for the tall tales people would later tell. In one story, Johnny Appleseed sleeps outside in a hammock and talks to the birds. In another, he comes up upon an injured wolf. He cares for the wolf until it heals. After that, the wolf would not leave Johnny's side. Chapter 4, Going Farther West Johnny continued to meet new settlers. He sold them apple seeds and seedlings, and he tended his many apple orchards. In time, he found himself moving farther west into the Northwest Territory. He traveled to areas that are now called Ohio and Indiana, my home state. He again started his nurseries and waited for the new settlers to arrive. Johnny seemed to know exactly what routes, what routes the pioneers would use. Johnny had a problem. He knew his apple orchards could not supply him with enough seeds for all the settlers. What would he do? Where could he get more? Johnny knew that back in Pennsylvania, people used wooden presses to help squeeze the juice out of the apples. When the settlers did this, they threw away the seeds. Johnny thought, why waste those seeds? He traveled hundreds of miles back to Pennsylvania to get those seeds. He washed them and let them dry. The following spring, they would be ready for planting. Johnny had solved his problem. Sometimes it was easier for Johnny to travel by water than to walk. He made an odd-looking boat. He tied two canoes together side by side. He rode in one canoe. The other held his supplies. All these adventures made Johnny Appleseed a folk hero throughout the eastern United States. There was something else that made him a hero. In 1812, a war began between the Americans and the Indians and British. Johnny got along well with everyone. He was not happy that the Indians and the Americans were fighting. Johnny stayed alert, and when he saw trouble coming, he ran to warn the Americans. His warning saved many lives. Chapter 5. The Legend of Johnny Appleseed Lives On Appleseeds and trees came to America with English settlers in the 1600s. John Chapman helped to spread their growth west into the wilderness. No one knows how many apple seeds Johnny planted. For 50 years, he supplied the settlers with seeds and seedlings as they arrived in this new territory. Apples from his seeds provided food that helped the settlers survive. He had no wife or children of his own. Instead, he served the pioneer people and the country. John proved to be a good businessman. Some sources say that he made enough money selling his seedlings to buy over 1,000 acres of land. Although he lived like a pauper, his lands were worth a lot of money. Johnny died on March 18, 1845, in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He was 70 years old. The story goes that he got very sick after walking 15 miles in the cold to care for one of his orchards. On his death, his valuable lands were given to Elizabeth. Stories about Johnny Appleseed continued to grow. 
Some people said they still saw him, even after he died. He was reported as far west as California and as far south as Texas. Over 150 years after his death, people were claiming that apple trees on their land had been planted by Johnny Appleseed. Today, apples are the most popular fruit in America. There are more than 2,500 types of apples grown in the United States. Apple trees can be found in almost every state because they grow well in many different climates. Johnny's pioneer adventures are still remembered. Children throughout the United States learn about him each fall, just as the apples are ripening on the trees. They can read books and see videos about Johnny Appleseed's life. Many children visit apple orchards at harvest time. In Fort Wayne, Indiana, the place where Johnny Appleseed is buried, and that is a national landmark. Every September, the townspeople have a Johnny Appleseed Festival. They show others what life was like on the frontier in the early 1800s. They prepare special food, play music, and dress in pioneer clothing. People who traveled to Ashland, Ohio, can also see what life was like for Johnny Appleseed by visiting the Appleseed Outdoor Drama. They can take a hike through Johnny Appleseed Forest and watch a show about Johnny's life. In Johnny's hometown of Leominster, Massachusetts, there are still farms and orchards where people go to pick their own apples in the fall. Many books and poems have been written about this hero. Johnny Appleseed is a part of our hearts and our history. So you can pause it here if you're interested in writing this information down in your graphic organizer where it fits. This is some history during his lifetime in the United States. So it is a legend because a lot of the thing, well, we just read a biography, but in the legend, you'll see a lot of this real history being told. And here is the glossary, which you should have already had a look at. All right, I hope you enjoyed that, that biography. So work on your graphic organizer and submit it to your teachers before the end of the day.